I am here to try to bring you all back to that teaching. But I've got to start with what you understand. I've got to start giving you what you think you want so you'll learn how to think on the level of what I have to give or what you know you need. But I can't start by pouring out. I've been teaching for 20 years on earth, in and out, visiting in and out of here. Different beings speak to you at different times through me. Different trying to answer all of your questions to prepare you for the real knowledge, the real information that you have to have after you get through wobbling in how great you are and how you got here and how your Abraham and your Keto and your this, when you finish all that ego tripping, then I can get down and teach you the truth about things and prepare those who are supposed to leave here to prepare so when the ship does come, they can go. Why man know what Exodus uh, encounters of a third kind is? Because he remember the first encounter was when the masters came down. The second encounter is when Jesus came down. And he knew the third encounter would be when the mothership comes. He knows what he's talking about. And he knows that inside y'all is a drive to find your way back to the ship. It's something inside that's driving you. Let your body win and you're going to eternal damnation. Let your soul win and you're going to everlasting life. When they say everlasting life, my sons and daughters, all they mean is when you get out of the earth's atmosphere where the heavenly father has created suns and moons to control time, you move into an eternal time system. You only have these time systems when you're trapped in the earth's atmosphere, so a hundred years seems like a long time. When you move outside of this sun, moon, and star of this galaxy, Time is much, much more broader, and what you call one day could be a thousand years. That's eternal life. I hope that's understood. Go ahead. Why are you going up in space? What's the point of each other? What for what? They're trying to get out of here. They realize that the ozone layer is gone. They realize that the insects are increasing, the disease is increasing, and, you know, the drugs are increasing. And the white man wants out. He wants to get back to Saturn. He wants out of here. That's why he could spend all that money to try to throw rockets in his face and ain't spending that money trying to cure diseases or hunger. So a person is spending money on their transportation while their house is burning down, that means they plan on doing what? Leaving, point blank. So the white man is trying to get out of here because he sees that this planet, Terra, is about to destroy itself, going to self-destruct. And he wants out. Point blank. Simple as that. That's why he's calling them shuttles. A shuttle is to take you from one place to the next, correct? He wants out. He's going to leave black people here to destroy themselves. And what about the satellites? What else you want? Communication, because they need to communicate from interplanetary communication. A satellite is like a telephone, a wireless telephone. Only instead of sending down just FM frequencies for speech, they can send down uh, patterns for sound, color, and they can beam up images. The white man is seriously right now trying to figure out ways to alter DNA, the, you know, because he got this from extraterrestrials, and to transport your DNA to a hologram and project you into another galaxy, another dimension, and then send your chemistry after that, and you'll, what he called, beam there. He's working on that. Extraterrestrials do it now. He don't have it, and they won't give it to him. So what he's doing is trying to get up there using satellites to monitor different communications that extraterrestrials have from chip to chip, but he can't translate it anyway, because they have a crystal translator. He don't know the power. Um, in reference to a seraphim and cherubim, just as you gave me the seraphim so that you might be a, a good aim. You have to speak again, because it's distorted. Okay, um, in, in reference to a seraphim and cherubim. A seraphim and a cherubim, yeah. Okay. Just like the seraphim might know that you might be a good angel, just like, uh, do the devil also know that you want to be, well, they also try to pull you a different way. Yes, they, but how they do it is through your heart, your aura. See, when you think negative in your inside, there's lights around your body that changes color. And when these evil demons, they see this aura changing, these evil suggestions around you, they're, they're magnetically drawn toward that. And they don't, they don't have to hold up above your head. But three seconds, the three minutes, when they can figure out how your brain waves work and assimilate themselves into your physical composition, and from there on, start influencing you to start doing negative things. First of all, I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, secondly, I'd like to ask you some questions because by being raised by Elijah Muhammad, uh, you are the continuation of his teachings. I bear witness to that. 
And there are some things I'd like to ask you concerning the mother plane first, the first question. Uh, Elijah Mohammed taught us that the mother plane was a mile by half mile and that it was put up by Orientals. He specifically said Japanese and that it was Japanese who were piloting them is my feeling, if I recall correctly, that it has 150 smaller bombing planes, each of them containing two thermonuclear bombs that are capable of going six miles down into the earth and causing explosions as high as mountains. Um, I read in your pamphlet when you talked about the mother plane, uh, you indicated or alluded to the fact of them being piloted by uh, either extraterrestrials or people here on the planet. Could you for me please make that clear, your understanding on the mother plane? Yes. The book of Revelation, first of all, explains in detail about the mothership. The reason why it refers to the mother plane because it is indeed a whole city. It's not just a ship like people think. It is tremendous. And the specs of it and the description of it, as our life I was trying to explain to people, are broken down in the book of Revelation 21 and 22. Revelation 21 actually gives you the measurements of it in human speech. Now the reason why our life Muhammad, who saw the mothership in a vision, you understand, yes. said they were oriental, is because these beings that he saw, and this is what most people are interpreting when they think about extraterrestrials, Make note that they always interpret them as not having lived. These are the military from another galaxy, from Zeta Galaxy. I don't want to get too spaced out so people start thinking you're crazy. Maybe <laughs> they don't understand. Zeta. Zeta. Like it's uh, Z-I-D-A, Zeta. Right? Uh -huh. That's a galaxy. All right? And these beings are usually four to five feet tall. They have a, a grayish brownish color. They have very large slanted eyes, like Orientals. They have the feet, so if you know Orientals have small noses and you know, they predominantly look like Orientals. Because the messenger was seeing a vision of them, he didn't know to know that they were extraterrestrials at the time. So he interpreted them for what they looked like to him, which was Orientals. Now today, in this UFO thing they talk about, whenever they describe these things, you look at them and say, they look like Orientals. <laughs> So I was like, I'm way ahead of the time in that. You follow? Yeah, and they are equipped to destroy the planet if they have. And in the Revelations, again, when they speak about it, about the, the, the star hitting the planet Earth and going down and making a hole in the planet Earth, so this, this was what I was talking about. The only time these extraterrestrials, these beings, will interfere with what's taking place in the planet is when the devil gets ready to destroy the planet and destroy a lot of children. Then they will intercede on the behalf of the righteous, like the honorable life Muhammad taught. And they know all the righteous, and they will call them by their name, and they will respond, and they will be taken up, up into the ship. And then they will release fire bombs against the earth to destroy the planet earth. And it will not destroy anything except those things do not have a large field of righteousness on that's what they're talking about. This is what he was talking about. He was talking about the doomsday. And if we went through Revelation 21, we see, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And that's what Uncle Elijah Muhammad would say. He would refer to paradise as here after. Meaning here on earth after the devil's 6,000 year period is up. And he has been taken off the planet. And Allah appears in his good time to show forth his power that he is Allah. And that power of all things. When that time comes and the devil is removed, this is referred to as a here after. Muslims say here after, here after the world ends. Honorable like Mama was saying here on earth after the devil is removed will be the paradise. That's what he explains. And he goes on. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And see, Honorable like Mama did speak about heaven. Even though a lot of people didn't realize that, because when he broke down who the original black man was, he said, Asiatic black man, make a owner, cream of the planet Earth, father of civilization, and what? God of the universe. So he didn't know about a heaven, but he was talking about a kingdom, which is a ship, not no spook heaven, where people going to go sit not next to no white god, or no, you know, <laughs> that, that Christianity, that devil mentality, he called lies. That's how he was talking about reality. But he couldn't tell them about extraterrestrials. They already thought the messenger was crazy. But he was saying that we are Asiatic black men. We are original people. He was talking about extraterrestrials and UFOs and motherships and little ships coming out. Man, the white man would have been off as enough black people. If the white man writes them off as crazy, what do they say? He 
you must be crazy. The messenger was preparing them so when I come, I will be able to continue some explanations. Plus, he knew that the news media by that time would have to reveal certain truths that would make black people. Now when I mention extraterrestrial UFO, black people don't freak out because now y'all believe they exist. Why? Because the white man. <laughs> they exist. Not necessarily you, but a whole lot of people in there. So let's see what happens in number 21 of Revelation. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth was what? That is here after. You see what I'm saying? That's all I was talking about. Here after. Whether all the students in the world want to bear witness or not, the truth is true. Then he said, and passed away, and there was no more sea. Now check that. And then what did John say? And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, which means city of peace. I would like to talk about the meaning of Jerusalem, the way it means founder of peace. Remember that? Yes. Coming down from God out of heaven. Out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. You see that? He spoke about the mothership coming. It's going to be prepared for us. And we got to be like a husband ready, ready to wedlock into this city. Ready to go to it and live with it. Let's go on. What is that? And I heard a great voice out of heaven say, Behold, the tabernacle of the Tabernacle is temple. Hey, God. Of God is with man. And he will dwell with them. That's why the old black mama said a lot will come in his own good time to show forth his power. He's all wise. Because it says he'll be in that temple with them. He'll dwell with them. You see that? Go ahead. And they shall be his people. And? And God himself shall be with them and be their God. The old black mama wasn't making nothing up. Everything he was telling them was like the scriptures. They just couldn't relate to the scriptures. And he couldn't, he had to take them, what did he say? It's a baby stage. I had to take y'all gradually by the hand and walk y'all through. He couldn't unload all that through. If Uncle Lyman would have unloaded all the things he knew, the white man would have spent his whole time trying to kill him. Because he thought Dr. Martin Luther King knew something killed him. He thought Malcolm X knew something killed him. He saw what Clarence says the X broke off from Uncle Lyman's helmet and started preaching in the hollow They said, uh-oh, there was a law. <laughs> you know what I mean? They thought he was real. They killed the man. Just to prove that he's not a law. That's how they work. When we read this whole book of Revelation 21, it'll tell us. And God shall wipe, when they say God, we know they're talking about Allah. Shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes. What are you saying? I, I give all I have, and what? The clock book, all I have, because I've waited for 379 years for this day to come when the devil will be taken off the planet. When they said, what's going to happen? What's going to happen the devil is moving from the planet and say, I give all the heart and all that which is my power to see this which I waited so long for. Right? That means last, the tears and the suffering when the devil's time is up will be wiped away from your faces, wiped off your eyes. You cry no more, it says right here. And God shall wipe away the tears from your eyes, and there shall be no more death. Neither shall there be sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain for the former things, this old world, the world of the devil, and it's 6,000 years, what? A pass away. And he that sat upon his throne said, Behold, I make all things new. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. It's going to be a new one without the devil. And he said unto me, Right, for these things are true. It's been going on for a long period of time. And beings have been trying. But see, what is long to y'all is short to us. What 6,000 years is, a, is, a, is, a, is less than a day to us. The whole information of your whole planet could be absorbed in a couple of minutes by any master. All the information of your whole planet, you're developing rapidly, much more rapidly than you're supposed to. Because you'll find the abundance of beings surrounding this earth plane, trying from different galaxies to keep you from, you people from being destroyed by the cherubim. And we're trying to wake you up soon enough to get you back, but uh, it seems almost impossible. So many people have learned to love the cherubim as opposed to the seraphim. Tell me who Yannin is. Yannin is an extraterrestrial being who incarnates into the body of Imam Isa to pass on information to you. He is one of the elders, the 19th. He resides in the 8th galaxy of the 19 galaxies. And they do travel by ships, as you would call them for lack of a better word. And they've been intergalactically traveling and coming to this planet since 
11,500 years ago. And Yanun is one of the masters that's been assigned to awake you people up. Because you people are a portion of ancient uh, births of the Jabariyans, as you probably don't even know what that means, right? And some of you must be walking up. And the master would come. The master that you saw was called Rama. If you would have gotten a closer look at him, he comes from 4,000 years before Jesus. If you would have got a closer look at him, you would have saw that he had white hair and red eyes. He's a caramel complexion, fairly thin, and his name is Rama. He visited this planet many times. He lived in Shambhala. I don't care how big it sounds to you, one day you'll find out it's true anyway. That in the center of your planet, there is another world in the center. There's subterranean pathways to different chambers in the center of your planet. The pyramids are entrances there, and so are the pyramids out in South America and the Nairobi Desert and out at the Antarctic is the entrance in. And Yadin is one of the masters of the school of the birds. They call him the feathered bird. This is why in South America, when they, when they look over the sky and they see this image of this bird on the ground, that is his school. So certain arriving masters to this plane knew what school they would go to. Each galactical, what do you call it, body had their own school on this planet. Muslims uh, don't realize that throughout the Holy Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about angelic beings coming to earth, you have interred them because of Christianity in the 18th century into little white babies with wings when you're talking about celestial and terrestrial beings or extraterrestrial beings who have been visiting y'all for a long period of time. But some of you are the sons and daughters of extraterrestrials who came here and you have to be brought back to power to defend this planet against the destruction by Azazel and what they refer to as Lucifer and the other 200 fallen angels which were again extraterrestrial beings who invaded this planet 6,000 or 5,000 some odd years ago and have been ruling and have caused the masters to either hover or to go into the subterranean parts of the planet and they just come up to either ascend to the earth to teach man or they will make intergalactical communications, leave and come back. And this is what Elijah saw, this is what Jesus said when he said he was caught up in a whirlwind in the clouds and went up. The whirlwind in the clouds is the ship itself. Elijah was taken up in a chariot and Enoch was translated into heaven by a chariot. It's throughout the scriptures and three men visited Abraham at his tent and then one went up and the other two went on down into Sodom to try to talk Lot and his family into coming out. You know, these, these stories that you have interpreted in the scriptures strictly as religious dogma because of the translation by the Christian churches, etc., who had no knowledge of extraterrestrials, they have turned the spiritual, the, the spiritual community of beings who have existed in other galaxies into God or into angels and gave a bunch of names that didn't apply to them. And so you just happen to talk, mention one who is very powerful, Yanun is named. They, they say Yanin, it's also it's pronounced Yanun, depending on the dialect of what galaxy you're in to pronounce it and change it. And, and the one you described was another one called Rama. It was asking you about Yanin because Yanin is a sign to give you all answers about the things that you need to know in this time and the time that you've come from to be able to distinguish the 144,000 who would be those extraterrestrial beings to prepare them to create that whirlwind and make that ascension out of this state which they call the rapture rising up from the earth while it goes to its turmoil with the lamb as they refer to him which is merely a symbol of a humble being from an extraterrestrial. And why the Quran says we sent you down to earth. They, they, they keep missing it says when there's a turmoil in the garden in heaven that we cast you down to earth in the Quran. From where? The angels come down from where? 
from floating around in the sky. No, they sent you down to Argos, which is Earth, the blue planet. They sent you here from other galaxies. When you violated the law, intergalactical law, you was cast down here like prisoners. You all are, are away with, as you would call it. I don't know a better word for it. That you all are in, signed to a prison. Earth is a prison that you all are in. And you are people who rebel, who would listen to Satan, as you call him, which was Azazila then, or Tanush. You listen to him. You follow, and you've been assigned to earth until you overcome that. Until you turn and give your total reverence to Hua, Allah, Allahi, La ilaha illa Hua. But you incorporate in that, even that when you say Hua, you have to say God, Allah, God, God, Allah. You keep interjecting. You personify him and say he was Master for our Muhammad or he was Yahweh ben Yahweh. You always have to do something rather than to just serve the omnipotent source of the Hawa or way is inside you, the essence of life. So now you've been assigned to this prison which is called Arthur, the blue rock earth, until you, which they say, are born again. And born again of what they say? Of the body of the spirit. Of the spirit. Y'all must be born again of the spirit. You must be transformed from being this mortal being who is destined to die back to immortality. You follow? You must become a supreme being again in order to be worthy of intergalactical traveling again. So now what has happened, the devil's seed is in the earth mixing in with the God seed as you'd have it and it's keeping you all bound to the planet and creating new dogmas every day new deviations from the fundamental truth and calling it religions and sects and all different types of Islamic, Sunni, Shia, Ahmadiyya, Bilalian, Black, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, and just creating new dogmas to keep you from seeing the state of Surah al Mufadim, as they call it, the Surah al Mufadim, the straight way of those who made the pathway through the galaxy. The Surah al when they say the Quran, and they know Surah al Mufadim, they're telling you, I want to be guided and they know the author of the Fakim. I want to be guided for that way. I want to get back out of here. Surah the Ravina and Amba Alayhim. You know what I mean? That Surah of those who you are giving your grace, Allah Ta'ala. I don't want to be like those people who got the everlasting curse of who's damned to this earth forever. Well, it's all in. For those who, who deviated off that path that was leading from Malakut to Nessu and went somewhere else. Or as they translated in modern times, have left the path of Deen al-Islam and went into other denominations of thought. And you deviate from the path of Deen al-Islam when you deviate from the path of Mila Ibrahim. When you deviate from the religion that Allah Ta'ala gave to the prophet Adam, which was the, the, the way you should work your way back to Jannah to Idris, back out of this plane and back into Malakut, the domain of angelic beings from which most of you have come. But some people here have made an everlasting pact with a Zazila, a Zazila of Tanush, this being who rules in, inside the overthrow of Mikael in Malakut, prior to the birth of your planet as a result of that, was cast down. Some mortals have to come to him and begin to worship him in a subtle kind of way. One of his names is God. And they've taken it and called the law of God, and the hope of God in his oxen, etc., etc., etc. You follow? So you just happen to touch on a very sensitive subject. And you all are, uh, I am here to try to bring you all back to that teaching. But I gotta start with what you understand. I gotta start giving you what you think you want so you learn how to think on the level of what I have to give or what you know you need. But I can't start by pouring out. I've been teaching for 20 years on earth, in and out, visiting in and out of here. Different beings speak to you at different times to me. Different trying to answer all of your questions to prepare you for the real knowledge. 
the real information that you have to have after you get to wobbling in how great you are and how you got here and how you're Abraham and you're Keto and you're this. When you finish all that ego tripping, then I can get down and teach you the truth about things and prepare those who are supposed to leave here to prepare so when the ship does come, they can go. You follow? And I know that sounds crazy, but he wants to make me sound crazy. That's why he made movies like Star Trek, because he knew this knowledge. The devil, he believes he knows these things. And that's why he saturates the television with about a, a bunch of things like fiction, so that when the final truth comes, I say, your whole concept of religion in the Bible is wrong. You don't even know what you're talking about. You're talking about intergalactical beings, you're not talking about angels. You're talking about the ultimate source of all existence. You're not talking about God and Jehovah. Those are just expressions. When you say Allah, you're saying El Hua. Yahoo, oh, he who is. And you cannot define him while still confined to this prison called the physical body. It's amazing. <laughs> this is amazing to me to hear people from this planet <laughs> asking questions about such intricate things. It is really amazing. I don't, you don't even hear yourselves. That's what's so funny. You don't, you don't even hear yourself. You hear yourself talk to me, but you don't even understand half the things you're asking. It's amazing to find that the spiritual people here are beginning to wake up. It is not about a water religion. You know what I mean by a water religion? When they dip you in some water and say you're baptized, or some, or you or go to Mecca and then say I'm a Muslim, where it's just the physical aspect of the deed, it's amazing that y'all are now probing into the esoteric part of your existence and trying to get a better understanding of the real you and not the synthetic you that you call your body. It's a wonderful day. Yo, Hadi. I want to ask a question. First of all, wait, let me correct him. El Hadi is my father's name. <laughs> hey, okay. What is it, what is meant lately? I've been getting the flash in front of me, the white fog, like I'll be standing or I'll be in a certain place and I'll see a white, like a white, or uh, like a... White a, mist. A mist, yeah. A, how do you know that? Because I know what it is. A mist in front of me and it just comes and it stays there for a second. Then I, it'll go, then I, I can move and I, I'll go to another place and I, my mind just be... You know, I don't be thinking about anything in particular. All of a sudden, it flashed in front of me, but I can't really, you know, figure out. You haven't had, see, the thing is, you're looking, at, you're looking at beings who are here in the Earth's atmosphere trying to reverse the negative flow of current that's here, okay? You can't assimilate them because you haven't developed the, the inner part of you. You're developing, but you have not developed the inner part of you to be able to focus on them and take shape the way you do physical things. Meaning, human beings are under the impression that when they look at something, they really see it, and they don't. Um, I know there's 19 other galaxies, and some planets have been destroyed, but how do they... Wait a minute. Huh? There's 19 galaxies in Theta. What's that? Theta is where Yannis comes from. There's Zeta, Theta, Alpha, Beta. These are Greek names uh. that were given to the different star formations in other galaxies. There's 19 galaxies within the star formation of where Yanun comes from. Oh, and he just happens to come from the eighth planet called Risk of a three sun galaxy, which is one of the 19. When you get into Zeta, or what they call Zeta One, right, that's another star, star formation, and they have many galaxies there, <laughs> okay? It's much more complicated oh, than more complicated. just that, yeah. <laughs> Well, oh, I just wanted to ask you, what do extraterrestrials look like? I mean, you see these um, on television, you see these green nine monsters, but do they actually look like that or really more like us? I understand what you're saying. Are you with me? Let me explain something to you about that extraterrestrial thing. Uh -huh. When an extraterrestrial visits Terra, Terra is one of the names of the planet Earth used by extraterrestrials. The project planet Earth is called Urenda. Have you ever given a chance to remember? And Jesus, by the way, is on a starship, and his starship name is Senender. Okay? He's not called Jesus or the Messiah, he's called Senender. But let me go on. If an extraterrestrial ship, as you call him, comes into the earth and lands, correct? For the first time, and he lands in a jungle, 
and he encounters a lion, what do you think he'll think? That that's an earthling. But he'll think that the lion is an earthling. Yeah. If he encounters a, if he goes beneath the earth into the sea, like the vortex do, when they come here, they go under the sea. What do he think when he sees under the sea? He'll think those are earthlings. See, what's wrong with people on the planet Earth? They tend to think that they're the only earthlings. We are the human beings. We are the rulers of the planet Earth. When in reality, every living creature from insect to ant, the bacteria, is an earthling. And therefore, different forms of extraterrestrials, depending on the ladder of their intellect and, and existence, come to Earth. There are bacteria that come to visit bacteria. There are humanoids that come here. The ones that frequent the planet Earth the most Right, Oranians are what they refer to as the little people. Mm -hmm. They frequent most here, and that's because back in 1947, one of their ships crashed here because of a, a storm, and they worked off uh, electricity magnet. And when they came back to uh, recover the bodies of the wreck, they encountered certain American officials, Truman in particular who all they asked for was the bodies and the remainings of the wreckage to take back and he made a, and they, they made him make a bargain with them to give them certain diseases and certain formulas like energy equals mass times the speed of light and your formula of flint atoms with atomic bomb which they told the extraterrestrials they were going to use for something good but in turn used for something evil and they didn't return all of the bodies and they didn't return all of, all of the uh, wreckage so the extraterrestrials uh, to what it called telepathy put Truman out of his misery and Eisenhower picked it up Eisenhower came into office and he became the one who was a negotiator for a certain project whose name I won't mention. And he became a communicator between the extraterrestrials then. You, you follow that? Yeah, and he also betrayed them. They gave y'all the cure for Sir Palsy. They gave y'all the cure for polio. They gave y'all the, uh, the vaccine for um, cholera and for malaria. And they, were, and they would have given you the cure for cancer and all the other diseases, but they betrayed these beings and killed them, the ones who visited. And so then they, other, other beings came from other galaxies, because it's an interplanetary thing of other galaxies who came here from other forms of life, for lack of a better word, to assist these the little people who are clearly just scientists. They're the different formations of stars. Some beings come here as scientists. Therefore, I have to take you up on a ship and examine you to find out how your organs work, find out how your brain works, but mortals on Earth are only using a fraction of their brain. Certain planets where the people have evoluted for millions and millions of years, they use their whole brain. And human beings, for some reason, have stopped. As you were evoluting in the beginning of your time, thousands of years ago, you were becoming smarter and beginning to use more of your brain, and that was giving you more psychic power. But uh, wicked extraterrestrials have taught human beings how to use computers which made their brain stop developing. And if you don't develop your brain, you're going to cut off your psychic power and y'all won't have celebrity and all of the powers necessary for communicating with extraterrestrials. So now you're doing everything on computers and you stop developing the brain. So the extraterrestrials are concerned, but you're so fascinated with the computers and how fast it gets things done that they can't convince you that thousands of years are being lost because human beings are not calculating with their hands and not developing their minds and not studying things from an esoteric standpoint of view, but they're looking at everything from a monetary and physical standpoint of view. So they foresee that planet Earth is about to destroy itself because man has got more sophisticated with his technology than he has in his spiritual powers. So they sent the Quran, they sent the Torah, they sent the Injil, they through celebrity have communicated with certain mortals like Muhammad and Zoroastrian and Buddha and Musa and Esau, or Esau is a different creature because he was caught between two worlds and communicated with them and tried to send down this information so that they can teach you and get you developed spiritually for when the mothership comes, which you read in Revelation 21 as a crystal city that Jesus said will come out of heaven with the 24 elders which Ezekiel saw, but you're not ready for it. You're caught up in the physical thing and the luxuries of the world and you're being persuaded by the cherubim to, to lean towards the darker side of things instead of by the seraphim to lean towards the lighter side. So to answer your question, many different types of beings are coming to this planet. The most important visitation was around 1947 after you bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki because you almost, with two atoms, split your planet. And if you would have split your planet, you would have interfered with things that are being done in the center of the planet in a place called Wahala and Shambhala. So the extraterrestrials started sending people from the vortex that went into the bottom of the Bermuda Triangle, which opens up 19 times a year. 
You understand that? It opens the way to a fourth generation. And they come in the vortex of, of being from the same galaxy as the little people, but they are they live underwater as opposed to on land. And they come here when uh, they're living under, under the sea here in the Atlantic Ocean and different places and you have empires there. And everybody is working to keep you from destroying the planet. So you all can develop. The only thing that cannot be done is they cannot interfere with the natural course of your planet. Because it will be thrown into a star holocaust. Meaning the magnetic field of the planet will be reduced, which y'all are doing anyway by removing the ozone layer. And we're trying to figure out any way we possibly can to re the ozone layer because if the ozone layer is moving up about a wave coming, you have 10 years before your planet will be destroyed. So extraterrestrials doing everything in their power to keep you from destroying yourself. And the terrorists are here in the form of human beings and y'all just don't see them as the white people and they're doing everything in their power to destroy you. Let me give you a little cue. If the man says driving, driving 55 miles an hour and he makes a car that does 260. Don't smoke cigarettes and they got cigarette commercials. Alcohol will kill you and they got alcohol commercials. Drugs will kill you and they import drugs in the country. You can't even smuggle a piece of jewelry in from South America but they can't stop hundreds of pounds of drugs. There's obviously an inward conspiracy for human beings to destroy themselves out of their ignorance. And extraterrestrials are not allowed to intervene. They can only suggest or through telepathy or influence certain human beings to make them react certain ways or just incarnate and teach like in my case. I was assigned here to teach you to try to raise your consciousness so that when the ship comes, you'll be ready. But I'm having such a hard time because you don't believe nothing I say because I'm not white. You believe the, the cherubims and everything they teach. If the white man came on the day and said, I made all of this up, you always believe it. With all the facts that I taught and every scripture and every verification, you still say, I knew there was something wrong with him all the time. It's that easy. The same way Malcolm X was easily influenced by the cherubim to turn against Elijah Muhammad. It's that easy. And that's holding y'all back. You have got to get back into using your calculus ability. You've got to get back into using your psychic powers. You people have psychic powers. How many times have you thought about calling somebody and you picked up the phone and they were there? How many times have you thought about seeing a friend that you haven't seen and turned the corner and they were standing there? How many times have you walked up on a person and said, I know this person, I don't know from where. These are people you know in your spiritual life. Some of you people know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all think I'm nuts. Some of you people have had extraterrestrial communication. Some of you people have had extraterrestrial dreams and visions. Some of you people know that you don't belong on this plane and other people don't know it. Some of y'all are mortal, and some of y'all are supreme beings. And the ones in there that are supreme beings inside, they know what I'm saying is true. They don't know how to get back because they've fallen so far, but they know there's something not normal about the way they feel, and the way things happen to them, and the way life is set up around them, and they know that people are out to hurt them, and situations always work against them. When they try to tell people, people say, oh, you're just paranoid. When you go to get a job, and they pick the other person standing next to you, and you say, dang, these people just don't like me. And then you go home and say, that's just paranoia. There's no paranoia. The devil knows who you are. And he sees it in your eyes even where you can't see it. And he's out to stop you. And he will block everything you want to do. He'll make your life totally miserable. When it's five people to get picked in the college, you'll have the highest credentials and you won't be the one to pick. You understand? When the bus gets away, when you're coming out of the street, the bus is pulled off. Everybody else catches the bus. The bus gets away from you. You understand what I'm saying? You get down there and someone says, boy, the train just left. I'm sorry, that was our last pair of green shoes. And you, be, and then you don't realize that this has been happening to you your whole life. Then you sit back and say, why does everything always happen to me? That's because you are a visitor. You understand? You're a seed of the elders and you're lost here. And you better wake up soon. Because when the devil opens up the door against you, he's not going to show no mercy.